Let's kick off 2016 by talking about something that's near and dear to all of us. Tossing people out of windows. You saw it in Avengers, Limitless, Fantastic Four, Watchmen, but what you probably didn't know or even really think about, nor should you have, is that that act has a name. Defenestration, to throw someone or something out a window. It started as all great things do in Prague, specifically or rather significantly in 1618. In 1609, then Bohemia, now Czech Republic was ruled by this guy. Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, and he was responsible for what's called the Letter of Majesty, which allowed his people, the Bohemians, to practice both Catholicism and Protestantism, which ruffled the feathers to say the least. Fast forward to 1617, Ferdinand II, a zealous Catholic, takes power and hopes to re-establish Catholicism as the number one deal in the empire. He did so by closing a bunch of Protestant churches, violating Rudolf's Letter of Majesty. So now we have an extreme Catholic authority and an upset, partially Protestant populace. In 1618, the Protestants gathered in Prague to discuss the removal of the anti-Protestant governors. With a kidnap, tried, and found guilty of violating the religiously accepting letter of majesty and promptly tossed out a window. The governors survived the 16-foot drop as they landed in a literal pile of shit. A year later, when Ferdinand II became emperor, not just king, he used the Holy Roman Empire's army to make an example of the Bohemian Protestants, crushing their uprising and eventually executing 27 nobles. This conflict acted as a precursor to the Thirty Years' War, which was not only the last religious war in Europe, but also the deadliest war in Europe before World War I, with an estimated 5.9 million deaths, though that number could be overthrown by the Napoleonic Wars. Body counts are hard to count. Ending in 1648 with the Treaty or Treaties of Westphalia, the balance of power in Europe had drastically shifted. Spain lost the Netherlands and with it their dominant position in European politics. France was now the big power in Europe. The concept of a Roman Catholic Empire throughout Europe was abolished and instead the modern structure of sovereign states with religious freedom was established. The war was so devastating that many Europeans lost faith in monarchies, religion, and governments, and out of this grew ideas of individuality, rationalism, and skepticism, concepts that would later become known as the Enlightenment. So in some respects, the defenestration of Prague acted as a precursor to a war that would create a social situation out of which the Enlightenment would grow. To be clear, it didn't cause the Enlightenment, and it probably would have happened anyway, but it did provide the appropriate situation for it to happen. That defenestration is called the second. The first, not actually the first, was in 1419 and resulted in the Hussite War, a fun time that I won't go into. The term was coined around 1620 as a manner to address the incident in Prague, but the funny thing is that defenestration dates back much earlier than that. I mean, tossing someone out of a window isn't exactly a unique idea. There are defenestrations in the Bible, which I won't talk about, but instead I'll mention the defenestration in 1378 in Leuven. Similar setup to the famous one in Prague, authorities risk losing power, crowd gets angry, storm city hall, and bam, they throw 17 elites out the window. It's a lot of elites. There were lots of these, like the 1383 defenestration of a bishop in Lisbon, the double defenestration of general the first time didn't kill him, Adam Khan, foster brother of not not a trap Emperor Akbar of the Mughal Empire in 1562, and I could go on. But arguably more interesting, to me at least, than the historical ramifications, which I admit could be a stretch, is the fact that someone bothered to name this very specific concept at all. A lexogap is when there isn't a word for an idea. Like in French, they have the word vu, which means to address either a group of people or someone you respect. The first half of that idea is covered in the English slang term y'all, which is great, but it's still technically a lexical gap. And this is less related, but if you're wondering, lacuna is the word for lexical gap, which sucks because it means that lexical gap isn't in itself a lexical gap, which would have made this video much more interesting. The word defenestration likely only exists due to the impact of the incident in Prague. But even if the resulting 30-year war and peace of Westphalia and enlightenment would have happened anyway, and they probably would have, maybe the word wouldn't have existed if the event wasn't important. For example, if we came up with English today, for some reason, and we we're going through and naming all the different types of murder, regicide, to kill your king, probably wouldn't have gotten named. I mean, no one is really going around killing kings anymore. Except for that guy from The Witcher 2. On that note, I think it would be a mistake not to include this, but regicide and defenestration oddly coincide. 
like a lot. One of the earliest supposed defenestrations is of Arthur Brittany by his uncle, King John in 1203. However, while it is thought that King John did kill his nephew or at least ordered him to be killed and that Arthur was imprisoned in the tower in the castle in Rouen, France shortly before his death, there is nothing except for Shakespeare's interpretations of the events to suggest that Arthur Brittany was defenestrated. But fear not, there are plenty of king-related defenestrations. In 1452, King James II of Scotland and friends stabbed 26 times and then defenestrated the 8th Earl of Douglas at Stirling Castle. King Charles IX ordered the defenestration of an opposing leader, Gaspar de Coligny, in 1572. In 1903, Serbian King Alexander and his wife Queen Draca were defenestrated by their own military officers, and it goes on. Defenestration isn't a purely historic concept either. It still happens. A lot of the time by accidents, as was the case with the defenestration that happened in my hometown of Toronto two years after I was born. In 1993, Gary Hoy, an attorney, was demonstrating to a few legal interns that the windows of the Toronto Dominion Centre were unbreakable. But they aren't, and they broke, and he fell tragically to his death. But it's not just accidents. Defenestration still happens for political and conflict-related reasons. In 2007 in Gaza, men allegedly associated with Hamas defenestrated an opposing Fatah supporter, an act that would be mirrored the following day by Fatah supporters defenestrating an Hamas supporter. It seems that tossing people out of windows happens to coincide an awful lot with political strife and war and accidents, but that's not my point, safety first, and I guess it's reassuring to know that each and every one of us has a powerful and deadly weapon at our disposal that can overturn governments, bring about enlightenments, and also act as a lovely source of free light. Now, I'm not American, but isn't that what the Second Amendment is really about? Unless you live in a basement, I guess. What do you guys think? Is defenestration the solution to the world's problems? Probably a no, but either way, let me know in the comments. And if you want, you can check out my Patreon campaign, which is down there somewhere where you can check out some sweet perks, one of which is tossing me out of a window. If by tossing me out of a window, you mean hanging out with me at the end of January on some undescript, undecided date, because that's a thing. If you haven't already, be sure to click right on my face to subscribe, or at least think about it.